Hello, welcome to another episode of Stephen Inks. I know what you're thinking. It's good to see me again. And you know what? It is. Today I thought we'd talk about a subject which is not pens, literally not pens, literally five things that are not pens that I think you should get for your pen collection. I'm thinking about it, I think there might actually be six things. Six things that you should buy if you are a pen lover. I could recommend more pens for you to buy, and trust me, I will, but uh, let's face it, you were gonna buy more pens anyway. So if you're a fountain pen artist or you like to create things with your fountain pens, uh, be those handwritten letters, or indeed your art, which is the focus of this channel, you may need a couple of other things just to uh, round out your toolkit and get the most out of the pens that you already do have. Hopefully this list matches something that you have at home or you might have a few things you wanna add to it. I would love to hear from you in the comments, but let's get into it. Number five, or six, five, six. This is engaging content, right? Number six, I think that every pen owner should have a little bottle of silicone grease. And this is the one that I have. I've had it for about, um, I wanna say five, six years, as long as I've been into fountain pens. And really, I still have most of it left. You don't need a lot every time you use it. Um, it's great for um, sealing up places where an older pen might have leaked but personally, most of what I use it for is lubricating the pistons in my um, my converters and in the uh, pistons of my piston filling pens. If you don't do that, you'll quickly wear down the rubber of those things or the, uh, or the plastic, whatever they're made out of, and um, eventually they will fail on you and they will um, not last as long as they would if you just take proper care to lubricate them. I don't do it often, maybe, um, once every couple of months, I'll look at some pens as I'm cleaning them, just get all of that ink out of there and then add a little bit of silicone grease and uh, have it run nice and smooth. So I think you should have some of this. If you don't have it, it can really extend the life of your pens. Number five, general pen maintenance. I also think that everyone should own one of these. This is a blunt needle syringe. And if you look at the needle, it is not the needle of, an, of a syringe like uh, that could hurt you. So um, it's the end of it is, um, it's really hard to uh, hurt yourself with this thing. Not impossible, you can do anything that you set your mind to, but uh, I'd say improbable that you can injure yourself when using something like this. Uh, and the purpose of it is to be able to draw liquids up and expel them back uh, in a certain direction. So what I tend to do with this is, uh, and I have lots of videos where I've used this before in filling my pens, when the bottle is too small or uh, something about the pen won't fit inside the bottle, uh, I like to just open up the converter or the piston, uh, pull out the ink that I need and uh, drop it inside. That's mostly what I use it for. There's some other ways that it can be useful as well, including um, cleaning your pens. A great comment I got from someone on this channel is that they use a, um, a blunt needle syringe to put clean water in and then blast all the little inks with a little jet spray of water. It's really useful and it does work very well. I've, I use it all my, myself a lot these days uh, after getting that comment and um, it really does clean out those pens really well. So, And then also, if you have something that you can pull the end of it off, you can put silicone grease, see earlier in the list, um, in here and it, it can extend the life of, of this device too because essentially it, it works in a similar way to a pen that it draws liquid in and uh, has a, an end to push it out. So yeah, pick up one of those. Number, uh, Four, is it? Number four. This one's a little bit more specific to drawing, which is something that we do on this channel a lot and that I'm gonna be doing one for you later. I recommend that you have a kneadable eraser. These kind of erasers are fun to play with because they're stretchy, um, but they also can be useful um, because they're a little more gentle than traditional erasers. So you can pull up pencil, if you use pencil lines before you do your actual drawings or 
um, set up your lettering, calligraphy, anything like that, guidelines, that sort of thing. Um, you can pull that up without getting the ink along with it. A lot of times when you use a traditional eraser because um, the, the ink in fountain pens is water-based, is more likely to smudge or smear even after it's already dried. So this has been very useful for me when drawing and trying to make the ending look kind of finished and professional. I prefer the Faber-Castell, 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 however you pronounce that, Flubber-Castell. Number three, three, uh, before getting into kind of the little fixes and repairs you can do, um, I need to look at my pens up close. So I recommend one of these guys. This is a jeweler's loop or sometimes known as a pen loop. And um, you can get these for pretty inexpensive. I've had mine for several years, have never had to have it replaced. Plus, look how cool you look wearing this on your face. So if I were to take a pen that I wanted to look at up close, like this beautiful Conklin All-American, I can hold it up to the lens and I can see what the tines of the nib look like and whether they are tight or loose, whether they are aligned with each other, or if there's anything blocking uh, inside of the pen. Blobs of ink can get stuck in there, as well as, it uh, detaches easily as well, um, as well as pieces of paper, depending what kind of paper it is that you're using. So um, those are quick fixes, but when you get into more complicated things, again, you may want to look at your pen nib up close to see if everything's working right. I think we're at number two right now. I need to learn how to count things or pay attention to what I'm saying. I think that um, a lot of times when you get a bad nib, you might think that it's you know just a bad pen and sometimes we throw them out, sometimes we complain um, on forums and the comment sections of some people's YouTube videos. Um, I'm just kidding, I love you guys, but uh, you, you can also fix some of those problems, and one of the ways you can do that is with a micro mesh. Now, the particular brand that I have, I believe is for nails because of the shape and the size and the textures and all the pretty colors. I don't use most that were in my set. I use basically these three, and when you look at their texture, if you feel them, um, they're mostly almost smooth with just a slight texture to them. One of them almost feels like um, wetsuit material, if you are any uh, beachgoers in the audience. Um, but uh, yeah, what the purpose of this is to smooth out rough parts in the metal of your of the nib of your pen. It happens to especially lower, less expensive pens, but really all pens, um, if you use them a lot and their shapes can get distorted a little bit, the micro mesh can bring it back. You don't want to go too hard on that. You don't want to go for like low grit that feels like sandpaper, but more of this really fine grit, um, almost smooth feeling, and just running around in circles and moving slowly into less and less rough textures till you have um, the smallest one. And then you end up with a pen that writes lovely, and you can turn a $20 or a $10 cheap pen into something that feels like it costs twice as much, just with uh, a little bit of elbow grease and some time with some micro mesh. And finally, number one, but not in any particular order, uh, we do have brass sheets. What are brass sheets for? Well, I'm so glad you asked. You ask very convenient questions, by the way. Um, a brass sheet is used to go in between the tines of a nib and just uh, if you can see from the demonstration of my fingers, just kind of run back and forth almost like sanding or uh, how you would floss something with a tooth. Sometimes they even refer to this as flossing and um, you can get little bits of debris outside of your nib and if your nib tines are too tight together, uh, this can loosen them up and make it so that your uh, pen can flow with more ink. This does, by the way, have the side effect of um, widening your nib tines and possibly widening the line weight of the, of the pen that you have. So again, with caution and do it a little step at a time. So the set that I bought has four different thicknesses. This one is thin, almost like paper. 
I don't use it often, actually. Um, this one's a little bit thicker, uh, but still quite thin. I use this one a lot. And then this one's still thicker, almost like the, the thickness of like a Bristol or a, um, uh, a poster board kind of thing. And um, this one I also use quite a lot. The thickest of the ones that I have, I almost never use this one because my pen nibs are fine and extra fine. For drawing, I like to have those uh, really fine crisp lines. I do use this to smooth out and re kind of uh, retexture the groove of my, of my nib tines when I'm having a problem with uh, the nib tines being really tight and maybe not enough ink coming out or inconsistent ink coming out, but I do uh, try to be very careful with this. And again, if you're doing this for the first time, I recommend that you start uh, with a pen that it's okay if you make some mistakes on. All right. Um, and for more expensive pens, of course, talk to a professional. Uh, they will charge you more, but um, I think to preserve higher quality, more expensive pens, I think it's worth it. As far as your cheaper pens, if the question is throw it out or play around with it, see if you can fix it, I'd say see if you can fix it. These and these will go a long way in uh, making sure that your pens work the way that you want them to. We did it, right? That's the list. Anyway, let's draw. So this video uh, is a long time coming. Uh, some of you know that I took some time off from posting videos for a while. Not that I didn't enjoy making videos for you all, um, but needed a break. And I thought maybe I'll give myself the break that I need rather than burning out and uh, not enjoying what I do. So it was really fun to come back to making videos for you all. Um, and this drawing was also really fun to make. A uh, little bit of art advice, which I normally do give in my videos, but uh, didn't really have the space for it here, is to try to use contrast to your advantage to draw attention to important things. So um, my idea for this boat was just this sort of wreck of a boat with holes in it patched together and uh, holding together, just kind of like I try and hold my life together, um, doing the best I can with what I got, aren't we all? And uh, in order to make there kind of be an emphasis in the parts of the boat that were uh, sort of slapped together, like most of my art and uh, my life and my professional career is sort of slapped together, I decided to make the boat parts kind of dark and then the contrasted um, sort of items that were holding it together to be just keep them as light and put as few lines in between as possible and um, I think the effect turned out actually pretty good um, I'm, I'm proud of it and I uh, hope you liked it as well um, hopefully gonna see a few more videos like this uh, from me in the future not just pen reviews but also stuff on pen subjects pen adjacent subjects uh, things like that, um, just more excuses for me to draw and uh, make things for you all. Um, hope you like that. It's uh, good to be back and there's more videos coming in the future. Okay, I think we've talked about five things plus another thing that I think you should have. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be posting more videos on this channel in the next upcoming uh, months. So please like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. And um, just let me know what's on your list of non-pen things that a pen person needs to own. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Something like um, Vaseline, uh, may damage older pens and particularly pens made of more fragile materials like um, like cellulite cellulose sell you something what's the thing which which thing is the word that I'm thinking of not the one in your butt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely said five and uh, there's definitely six things down here
but I'm not going to do another take.